Oh, my jolly, my good fellow, it's four o'clock, and you know what that means. It's tea time. Yes, tea time. So grab your spot of tea and crumpets as we discuss the Boston Tea Party, that political and mercantile protest carried out by the Sons of Liberty on December 16th, 1773, in order to give a big middle finger to the British crown. Folks, this is one of the greatest stories in American history and a perfect example of why we need to preserve our history and culture as Americans. In order to understand the Boston Tea Party, you have to go back to the Stamp Act of 1765, which placed a huge tax on stamps. Well, the colonists weren't going to have it. They refused to pay the tax. Well, the British Crown Parliament that found out about this got together with Charles Townsend, who was Chancellor of the Equicor, and they created the Townsend Acts. The word Equicor here, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, is spelled E-X-C-H-E-Q-U-E-R. Now, the Five acts with the Townsend Acts, or the five main acts, were the New York Restraining Act of 1767. Four were passed in 1767. Then you have the Revenue Act, the Indemnity Act, and the Commissioners of Customs Act. 1768, passing of the Vice Admiralty Court Act. And these were all designed to strip the colonists of power and to remind them who was in charge. Now, through these acts, Parliament, the British Crown, placed huge duties or taxes on things such as glass, lead, paint, paper, and tea. And tea would become the big topic because tea back in those days was very expensive, if you're going to find out. Now, because of the backlash over the Townsend Acts, Parliament did repeal some of those acts, except for the Tea Act, because at the time, the British East India Company was in financial straits. And they thought by cutting out the middleman, passing the expense on to the colonists, they could force the colonists not only to buy British tea from the British East India Company, but that they could keep this company afloat. Well, the colonists weren't going to have this. So the tax on tea was reenacted in 1773, reinforced. Now the colonies saw this as tax without representation. So the British East India Company, being in cahoots with the federal government, started flooding Boston Harbor and these colonies with different ships full of tea. One of the main ones was the Dartmouth. Now, on November 29th, 1773, Samuel Adams, one of our great American heroes, he got together a group of thousands of people. Actually, there were more that showed up than he expected. And they met at Faneuil Hall. But because of the large size of the crowd, they had to move to Old South Meeting House. And it's rumored that he gave the green light for them to go out and raid these ships. But that isn't really true. Actually, he was trying to keep them from going out and be irrational, uh, jumping to conclusions here, trying to find some type of solution so that things would not end up violently as they had with the 1770 Boston Massacre. That was a century or so later where they went back and looked at these documents about, no, Samuel Adams had actually tried to curb the uh, the anger of the crowd. But of course, that didn't work out because within 20 minutes of the meeting, these people left and they were ready to raise hell on the British. Another thing that these colonists were really upset about was the fact that the British crown required these colonists to house British soldiers at any time without their consent. So you can tell things are starting to, pardon the pun, boil over. Now, the Sons of Liberty is the group that headed up the Boston Tea Party. And interestingly, they were a fraternity. And at the time, in Europe and in the colonies, you had all these fraternities popping up. This was the Enlightenment. And they were really heavy on no taxation without representation. So on the night of December 16, 1773, 130 men, including the Sons of Liberty, boarded three ships, They were in Boston Harbor, the main one being the Dartmouth. And it took them three hours to dump all the tea, 342 chests full. Now, the cost, this turned out to be 92,000 pounds of tea. The cost in those days was 9,659 pounds. That equates to, get this folks, $1,700,000 in today's money. That's a lot of tea. That's a lot of money. But it didn't end there because... 
in December of 1773, here's what happened. This is so this is so juicy. This is the best part of the story. You know about what happened with the raiding of these ships, and they dressed up as Mohawks in these disguises. The reason they did that wasn't to poke fun at the Native American tribes. They did that because they wanted to show their love of America over their love of the British crown. And by dumping tea in the harbor, that was giving a middle finger to British culture. Screw you, Great Britain. Screw you, the British crown. We don't need your taxes on tea. We'll get our own tea. We'll keep getting it from the Dutch because we get it cheaper that way anyways. We'll grow our own tea, for God's sake. So there was one last ship that came into port called the William, a tea ship. And that ship ran aground. But they were able to salvage the tea. And they taxed it, sold it to the locals. And when the Sons of Liberty found out that this tea was being stored in a warehouse, they destroyed the tea in the warehouse. So the conclusion here is don't mess with Americans. Isn't this a cool story? This is a defining moment in our history, the Boston Tea Party. No overtaxation without or taxation without representation. And by the way, I think it's very ironic that during the reign of the Confederacy, if you will, 1861-1865, they were making the same argument. And did you know that during the revolution, the British crown promised to free the slaves if they left their rebel masters? So this whole issue of overtaxation has been something that has been with us from the get-go. Because you see, through overtaxation, you're able to keep a population in check. You strip them of their power. It's one of the main range, uh, one of the, one of the main range, uh, main ways that you do it. Why can't I say the word main? M-A-I-N. Simple word. Main. M-A-I-N. Say it with every, uh, say it with me, everybody. Main. M-A-I-N. Main. But that's how you are able to strip away the power of the people over taxation. You get them to comply, just like what we're seeing with COVID or what we've seen over the past year. You must wear a mask. You must wear three masks. No, I'm not going to wear a mask over COVID and I'm not going to be overtaxed on tea or coffee or tobacco or whatever the, whatever the commodity is. So God bless the Sons of Liberty, Samuel Adams, our founders, who understood, who understood the importance of small government, understood the rights of man in a time when they were starting to begin to understand the rights of man. This is the Enlightenment, once again, the 1700s. Up until that time, everybody lived under the reign of a king. That's just how things were in those days. But the Boston Tea Party was something different. In a way, in a way it was, well, it was our way of saying to the world, we're not going to be reigned by a king any longer. We're not going to be under the thumb of a government any longer. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes, leave comments below. Now you can reach me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. Hope you enjoyed the video because I had a lot of fun researching this. Go check it out, the Boston Tea Party. There are so many great stories. There is, there is, there are, there are so many great stories. By the way, these videos are unedited. They're raw and edited. What you see is what you get. I can't even say raw and edited right on these videos. But that's the fun of doing these videos here on YouTube. So I hope you learned something. Hope you had fun watching the video, and I'll catch you next time. This is the Cultural Confederacy. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country, and have a great weekend. Peace out.